Epilogue. Vant could have been the king of the city, if he so chose. The land escaped citizens treated him as such. They offered him comforts of every kind, material goods, and any home he would have wanted anywhere within the township. But he stayed at the inn. He liked the innkeeper, and he loved her food. The days came and went. Sunrise, sunset, rinse, repeat. He spent his days walking the streets, taking meetings with newly appointed defense volunteers and cleaning his weapons for unforeseeable battles. Life was simple. But sleep. Sleep was the one thing that would not come easy. The dreams were always the same. Always. He dreamed of death. On a nondescript evening, he abandoned the idea of slumber altogether and instead stared at the ceiling wide-eyed. It was too damn quiet. He felt impatient, stagnant. His heart would not relax. Claustrophobia set in. The walls were so tight, so tight. He decided to take a walk, to clear his mind. He strapped on his wrist communicator and grabbed his satchel, as was habit, and left the inn. Land escape was a whisper at this hour, yet it still felt oppressive. The streets seemed too narrow, and the buildings too overbearing. He needed space, open air, the vastness of a star field to look upon. He approached the main gates. Being the savior of the city came with special privileges, including the ability to come and go as he pleased, no questions asked. The guards on duty nodded to Vant watching him through sunken eyes scarred by the goggles once forced into their brows by the immortals. They cracked the gate for him. He left Land Escape and walked into the open. Day broke. Then night fell again. He still needed more damn space. Maybe the mountains. He thought. They look so peaceful, so calm. He tried to alter his course. Teeth of fire gnashed at Vance's skin. A ravenous devil inside slashed at his flesh. He howled in pain and quickly course-corrected. He could not turn. He was ensnared. Ensnared once again by the curse. The return trip to Death's Lair had begun. His feet moved slowly, weighed down by his heart, which had sunk deep into his stomach. A prickly tingling formed in his chest around a hollow core. A core that was filling up fast with bitterness, remorse, and frustration. He remembered the last time he'd experienced this sensation. Almost thirty years ago, when forced to leave Re for reasons he did not, at the time, comprehend. The feeling now reappeared. This time for someone new he was leaving behind. Ski. Vance spoke into his calm. Ski. No answer. It was very late. Early. Dawn. Light was just beginning to break. It was cold and hazy. He heard a click and some ruffling on the other end of the line. Do you have any idea what time it is? Ski. He could not find the words. They were blocked by a barrier of heartache. I have to say goodbye. What do you want about Pops? He's calling me back. Fight it. I can't. You said you'd fight every chance you got. You said that. It was an accusation, but underneath the statement was sorrow. Ski's mother had been taken away from her because of an illness. Her father had abandoned her on his failed quest, and now... Her best friend was leaving due to a force too powerful to resist. Ski, I want you to know something. No, don't do this. Don't. I don't want to hear any of this. Ski. Nothing. Vance's eyes became wet. He had no idea if she would hear his next words. But he said them anyway. I will come back. I will. I just... I don't know when. Tell Grammy and W I'll see them soon. 
Dead leaves crackled underneath his rhythmic footsteps. He picked up the pace. More than a year passed. When he arrived at the center of the wasteland, his heart was filled with poison. The venom of anger had surpassed the mire of heartbreak. He was coming in hot, with glassy eyes and a pounding pulse behind his ears. He could see death's awful form in his mind's eye, and all he wanted to do was to tear into him. Vant dropped into the hole leading to death's lair. Blackness enveloped him, isolating him from everything but his raging emotions. He waited impatiently for his eyes to adjust. He stormed through the delicate cavern and halted at the torturous tunnel. Dropping to his knees on the mound of dusty bones, he dug into the pile of human remains to unearth a handful of energy and moisture pills. He greedily ingested them, then searched through the expedition gear of the crumbling bodies in hopes of finding one more thing, which he did. A bundle of rope. It was quality stuff, frayed, but not rotted, and plenty sturdy. He threw the coil in his satchel and activated his whip gauntlets. He sprinted beyond the tunnel of disfigured carvings grasping for his life force. He entered the piercing passageway, this time well aware of its secrets. He smashed the razor-sharp spikes that were no match for his fury, leaving behind a pile of rubble. He entered the antechamber, attempting to keep his wind. His lungs were desperate to squeeze air from the micro-thin layer of oxygen in the vast emptiness. He navigated the black labyrinth, turning in circles, searching for the face. Eventually, the blackness waned, and he could make out the mountainous formation in the shape of Death's Mask. He made a beeline for its mouth, the opening to the throne room, hoping to pass by unnoticed. A guardian golem dropped from the eye socket of the monument and blocked his path. The childlike brute took a slow but powerful swing at Vant, who sidestepped the attack. He knew that if he shattered the creature, two more would appear in its place. He had learned that the hard way during his first visit. He flipped switches inside his gauntlets, reversing the whip orientations and giving the coil some slack. Within the handholds, he twisted the ends of the lashes around his knuckles and got a tight hold. The golem lumbered toward him, stupid thing. Vant activated the thrusters. The gauntlets launched from his arms in the direction of the beast. They impacted with its chest, sending it tail over tits into the dirt. Vant tugged on the whips, zipping the weapons back into his hands. Easy, boy. The bone beast groaned, attempting to figure out how it had ended up on its ass. I have a present for you. Vant wrapped the legs of the golem with the rope. He pulled tight, then bound its arms as well. It was not going anywhere. Vant entered the palace. Death sat motionless, his hulking body sunken into his throne. Miss me? Death did not move. Not one inch. I can only assume you summoned me here to lift my curse. So let's get to it then. He knew it was unwise to taunt a demigod, but he was pissed. His sweaty palms gripped his whip gauntlets. His fingers rested on their thrusters. Death did not stir. We had a deal. I've done your bidding. I've wiped out the immortals. The hideous wretches that they were now release me. Vant removed a hand from a gauntlet, reached into his satchel, and tossed the mask across the floor. The relic tumbled to a rest near Death's massive boots. No. The words stabbed Vant in the gut. Excuse me? Finish the job. I have. Your job is all of it. All that you see through my eyes. Look deeper into the mask. Expand your pathetically limited mind. Do my bidding. Do your own bidding. Such behavior. I suppose, rebellious child, it is time for your spanking. Death rose. Vant revved the thrusters in his gauntlets. Death, before we get into this, I have something to tell you. It's something uh, important, something you should probably know. Speak. You are a cock. 
Silence. Then... <laughs> that condescending laugh. Now, immortal babe, the time has come for you to learn gratitude. We shall begin by draining your blood. I suspect we shall discover how grateful you were for it once it is gone. Death moved like a specter. He was everywhere. He was nowhere. He brushed past Vant, his magnitude leaving a gust of wind. Vant swung his iron fists where he hoped to find the beast, but hit nothing. Again he swung. Again. Death's hideous laughter assaulted Vant with every failed lunge. For a moment, death seemed to linger. Vant charged in with both fists. The form was a mirage. Vant ended up sprawled out on the floor. He leapt to his feet and let loose the whips. Their stinging impacts sent oscillating echoes throughout the Black Palace. He swung the lashes recklessly, hoping to at least catch an edge of his foe. He connected only with air. Death was toying with him. This was not a fight. This was a lesson. Only the foolish would challenge the very end of all things. You're a coward. Face me! There is no victory over death. He leveled Vant with one blow. Vant's body went limp. The wind shot out of his lungs. He collapsed to the floor. Vant wheezed, got to his shaking feet, dug into his body's energy reserves, and in a calculated move, flicked a whip at the mask on the ground, sending it into the air. He rolled underneath it. It latched onto his face during the descent. The already dark surroundings shifted into an even deeper darkness, and death was rendered as a violent, pulsing red shape before him. Vant could now see his foe. I don't want to defeat you. He retracted the whips and juked left, faking out death. I just want to punch you in the face. He swung right. His gauntlet smashed the creature's face. Death crumpled for a moment, then retreated. In his long life, it was the greatest feeling Vant had ever experienced. He laughed aloud, even though he knew what would come next. He was about to get dismantled. He did not care. In his mind, he had won. He had decked a demon. Vant stared at Death, whose silhouette was outlined in spastic pulses. The figure had the most volatile reddish form he had seen since donning the mask. As if... As if Death himself is also marked for elimination, Vant thought. The inevitable moment arrived. The terrifyingly beautiful chime of steel rang in the dark as Death unsheathed his scythe. Vant maintained focus and kept his masked eyes on the beast. Death weaved swiftly, leaving a glowing stream of red everywhere he went. With the newfound ability to track Death's movements, Vant pivoted and twisted to avoid the monster lunging at him. Out of nowhere, Death struck out. His weapon flashed faster than physics should allow. Vant raised a gauntlet in time to parry. Sparks flew from the clash of polished steel on hardened iron. Death swung again, and again. Vant deflected each blindingly fast strike. The speed of Death's swings increased with every attempt. The attacks were coming far too fast to comprehend. Vant let go of his thoughts and moved with the intuition of hundreds of years of battle instinct. It had become a dance of showmanship. The relentless gleams of Death's mystical blade blocked time and again by the sturdy weapon of a hardened fighter. Vance surrendered his mind and flowed with the tide of combat. Faster and faster the sight swished. Vant felt his focus slipping. In the tiniest moment of hesitation, the blade penetrated his defenses and connected. The edge slid across Vant's chest, his stomach, his thigh. Blood spilled from the incisions. Vant needed distance. He swung at Death's face, forcing him to dodge, which granted a brief opportunity to shift backward to surer footing. He extended the whips and activated the electricity modules. Lightning flowed from the gauntlets into the coils. Arcs of energy filled the blackness as Vant flicked at the beast over and over, forcing Death to disengage. Vant brandished the weapon without respite to keep the demon at bay. Flashes of light revealed beady eyes beneath the hood, studying Vant's attack pattern. Death sensed a weakness. He lunged. 
Vant adjusted by crouching and rotating a fist in a circle above his head, creating a propeller of protection. He kept his eyes trained on Death, who crept at the edges of his defensive radius. I'm through! Vant shouted as the blood in his body puddled at his feet. I've killed enough, no more! I will say when you have killed enough. How many have to die? Huh? How many? All must die when the time is right. Death paced Vant's perimeter of defense. And if they refuse, they shall deal with you. No, I am not your enforcer. I am not your slave. You can no longer force me to kill. I won't trade one form of torture for another. Foolish child, I'm not torturing you. Death vanished upward. I'm teaching you. He then crashed down onto Vance's one exposed area, his arm above his head, near the apex of the propeller where there was no electricity protection. In one swift stomp, Vance's arm crumpled into his torso, and his torso into his ribcage. His spine cricked out of alignment. His body tumbled into a broken heap. Have you learned nothing? Have you not seen the corruption of those who rebel against their expiration? Has your run-in with the immortals not shown you why those who flee death must be taken? Destroying them is an act of mercy. Death's gloves wrapped around Vance's limp body and lifted him up. He squeezed, wringing out Vance's vital fluids into a sopping mess in the dirt. Are you not grateful now for the blood that was once in your body? Do you not now long for it? Today, it seems you have learned both empathy and gratitude. Shame you had to learn the hard way. Vance's vision went in and out. Death dragged him through the palace and into a long stone corridor. It is time for your next lesson. It is time to expand your horizons. Time to give you a new perspective on life. At the end of the tunnel, an underground stronghold stretched for miles. Death tossed Vant into the expanse of room. He landed with a thud. Rise, ignorant child, and look upon your fate. Vant attempted to prop himself up. The world spun. His body trembled as he stood as tall as his broken frame would allow. A sweeping array of alcoves were carved into the stone walls prison cells with no bars. They were stacked high and ran deep into the nothingness. Vance struggled to make out the shapes of those trapped within. Black wisps of liquidy smoke. A moan emanated from one of the ethereal beings. It was a cry of suffering, deeper than suffering, a vocalization that came from the place inside of truest misery. Another cell burst into wails, and another then ten more, then fifty more, then a hundred. Cries, bellows, retching, begging, screaming. A chorus of unbearable sadness. Vant pressed his palms into his ears, but the resounding was far too pervasive. Thousands called out in the dark, their voices bellowing with the profundity of their anguish. Death's mask tightened on Vant's face. Tightened. He tried to pull it off, but it refused to let go. Stop this! <laughs> Death paced through the stronghold, like a victor in an arena. The soul-penetrating screams were more than Vant could bear. The sound vibrated his nerves and dislodged his fragile insides. He shrieked with the captives. The scream would not stop. It went on and on until it severed his larynx. Witness the repercussions of your insolence. Death lifted Vant off his feet and held him up, parading him like a trophy. He called out to those trapped in the alcoves. Meet the one who took you against your will. The one who destroyed your human forms. The one responsible for the end of your precious lives. Suspended from Death's grip, Vant looked closer at the vaporous beings. They resembled those lost from his past. He recognized Rantula, fighting for liberation. He identified the mayor's house queen, Dawn Rier, ripping herself apart from the shame of having lost her perfect physical form. He recognized the Knights of Rights, 
his heart shattering at the sight of the loyal troops he had sent to their deaths. Countless numbers of the recently dispatched, fetus-like immortals begged for mercy, as did the nomads and land escapers who had fallen under Vance command. Shyla, his wife who he had carelessly gunned down in his rage, melted into the structure in agony, a mere fragment of her former self. And there was Re. Vant reached a trembling hand out to his love. She screamed at the sight of him and recoiled as if he were a monster, which he believed himself to be. Death brought Vant in close, meeting him eye to eye. Vant looked upon his naked, maskless face, a wrinkled, crackled visage of chalky skin and charcoal veins. His saucer-like nostrils flared with hysterical hatred toward the immortal in his grasp and his tiny, black eyeballs reflected like mirrors. In them, Vant saw his own mangled form. Death smiled. I have kept them here. In purgatory, saved them for you. I refuse to transition them to the netherworlds where they would find peace. Defy me. Continue to rebel. Do as you wish. It is no concern to me. I shall watch them suffer alongside you. You, my favorite plaything. He dropped Vant and pointed at him in view of the tortured souls. Your fate is now tied to his. This insolent, untamable, unyielding lump of flesh is your only hope for salvation. Do not beg me for release. Your pleas fall upon deaf ears. Beg him. Beg this foul excuse of a man for mercy, for only he may set you free. The cries of the souls permeated Vant's core. Their melancholy was infinite. Vant wrapped himself into a fetal position, covering up with his robes. His physiology, pushed far past critical condition and emotional capacity, kicked into a grisly autopilot. Without his permission, his head bashed into the ground over and over in an attempt to kill itself. His fingers dug into his scar, trying to separate head from neck. His body was horrifyingly, mechanically doing everything it could to end itself. And then, death's words came. Words that cut through Vant straight to his core. Words that carried with them a heinous purpose. Why so grim, my little reaper? Vant looked upon himself, dressed in black robes, wearing a mask like a skull, and surrounded by the souls he had harvested for death. He saw what he was becoming, what he had become. The Grim Reaper. Just figuring it out now, are you? You will go back into the world and continue to harvest the damned. So long as you reap, we both shall live. The souls of the dead give me the strength to survive and the strength to keep your curse at bay. Vant shook his head. Death kicked him across the floor. Ever the obstinate child. Though this is the very reason you are here. Because of your consciousness of violence. Because you are the lowest of all creatures. Because you have committed atrocities based upon your whims. That is why I chose you, because you have never failed to kill what gets in your way. I suppose, in that respect, we are quite similar. <laughs> Death poked at Vant, taunting him. He spat a hunk of phlegm onto Vance back. <laughs> Death's sadistic laughter fused with the screams of the trapped souls, screams that turned into a thundering cacophony of despair. Vant was drowning in the deafening roar. His sanity was melting away. But something caught his eye. Tucked away in a far-off corner, one apparition did not cry out. It did not wail, and it did not succumb to the turmoil. Instead, it stood tall, with folded arms. It was the spirit form of Vant Huel, the first Vant Huel, who had lived before Terry had assumed his name. 
the apparition gazed with a purpose unbreakable by any force, and beamed the same compassion he had always bestowed upon his best friend. It was a compassion once given to a child born to a warmongering father, a compassion once given to a teenager who had lost himself in jealousy, a compassion once given to a leader who had created a reign of cruelty because he knew no different, and a compassion now bestowed upon a warrior living into a legacy that had begun centuries ago. The spirit inclined his head in acknowledgement of his friend. It was a simple gesture, but it implied everything. Unification, power, honor, strength, integrity, valor, love. The look infused every atom inside Vance's broken body with strength. He rose, ripped off the mask, locked eyes with death, and stared him down with defiant rage. The screams of the spirits hushed as Vant lifted the mask high. Then, with his other hand, he gave death the middle finger. The imprisoned souls erupted into ferocious cheers, united with Vant in rebellion. Vengeance was sworn. The Reaper will return. Mortal vengeance is coming soon.